Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, back in town from vacation, so now it is going to be time to get back to work on the Cobra. Uh, when we left off, I was starting to get some of the wiring put in place for the new ECU. Um, and I also did get the dash pad and some other parts in the mail right before I left. So uh, now that I have that, I think I'm going to start working on trying to get the dash mounted and cut to fit. Uh, as it does have to be modified to fit the Factory 5 Mark II car, as it's not a Factory 5 dash. So uh, I think with that, I'm going to get started on uh, messing around with that and uh, making it fit the vehicle. All right, so here is the dash I want to use, kind of revisiting it. And it's just laying roughly in place. You can see I've got the Factory 5 center brace there kind of holding it up. Um, and it's not pushed in all the way where it would, you know, sit flush uh, because the, the hinges are in the way. But you can kind of see where I'm going to have to cut to clearance for the hinges um, on both sides. I, what I did is I laid the old dash on top of this one, just kind of rough marked it to give myself an idea of what I had to start with and where I'm gonna end up at. So, you know, this is what both sides look like. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just cutting completely from the top corner there on both sides and maybe go in, I don't know, like kind of flat line-ish I'll have to, when I remove this, I'll take a look at where the hinges lay in, you know, an X amount and then just kind of try and radius it, something along those lines, just to clear the hinge uh, mechanism. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm looking at right now in order to try and get this thing put in place. So I'm going to pull it back out, to, you know, take a few measurements, take a look at things and uh, get a better idea. All right, first cut did equal parts each side. Here you can see it's just clearing under the hinge right now. I mean, it's also hanging a little low, so it will clear just fine uh, when it's actually put up into place. But uh, hanging a little low right now, or and then I'm going to need to go in probably about another inch in clearance for the hinge. So I'll have to cut in a little bit more into that curve so when this door is closed, I have uh, full, full clearance of the hinge. So that will be the next cut I make. All right, second cuts are made, and we have a, door, a, fit, a, win, a winner. Um, you can see where I extended it to, plenty of room for the hinges. Everything clears fine, and it actually fits up against the dash like it's supposed to, the dash cross beam. Uh, you can see the other side as well, same thing, plenty of clearance for the hinges. Uh, I've got the brace underneath kind of holding it in place. But uh, yeah, no issues, everything moves as it should so i think that's going to be pretty good as far as the cuts go um, and as far as that clearancing goes the only thing is as you can see there is a little bit of a gap up at the top i will probably just graft on some fabric or uh, some some sort of backing just to kind of extend the fabric up there to fill in those gaps they're not huge gaps and you know with the door closed you really don't even notice them it's covered it's just with the door open you're going to notice them so some sort of filler panel will probably go in there i'll have to figure something out um, i may just do something as simple as gluing some sort of like vinyl backing that's a little bit stiffer and i might actually not even have to uh, based on how sturdy the uh, actual dash pad material is but as you can see plenty of room for the hinges there and it looks like we have a winner as far as fitting this dash in um, only concern I still have with it is going to be in relation to the steering. Um, but I mean, it looks like with it in place, I'll have enough clearance for the steering column. I was afraid it was going to be a little bit high. I do have to double check on the other side as far as the mount goes, where it's going to end up once the uh, mount's put back in place, because it's loose, as you can see. But uh, I at least have some direction on what I need to do with that and where the dash is gonna lay in the car. All right, so it's been a few days since the last clip. Um, went ahead and was looking online as far as like how I wanna do the switch layout to try and match the, uh, you know, how the SC really was. So you can see here what I'm gonna do to the left side, turn signal on top, headlight on bottom. That's gonna work best with you know, the steering wheel in place. And then I will have my manual fan switch on top over there. Below that will be the dimmer switch for the lights and the dash, and then all the way over to the side, that will be the blower. Um, on a real SC where I have the blower, for that, that's for the heat. Uh, that would normally be your windshield wipers, but I don't have wipers on this car, so I'm just gonna use that spot for the blower motor switch. 
and then you also wouldn't have turn signals. Um, I believe there'd be a second fan switch or maybe it'd be for the wipers, not 100% sure, I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, um, that's what I'm gonna do there. I was also kind of looking at where the light bulbs go and if you can see in this hole here, it looks like I may have a little bit of a problem where there is the brace behind there. So I am probably gonna have to notch that uh, that square brace that goes uh, where the, uh, the light fixture is gonna go in the dash here. So uh, those are a couple things that are on the to-do list. Um, as far as the sides, you can see here where the open spot is and then where I had to cut it. What I'm probably gonna do is probably just run these kind of straight across-ish, try and blend them in better so there's not just this jagged uh, edge there on both sides because that's how it was cut. And then as far as this spot up here, I'll probably just try and adhere something to the back of the aluminum. Um, I might even have to. I might can just be able to put some like plastic or something inside of the uh, dash cover just to kind of fill that spot in. I don't know. I'll figure it out. It's not going to be a big, big area that I need to do. So that's kind of nice. Um, I did go ahead and I ordered DAP weld wood um, high heat, um, basically Lando top adhesive. So I've got that on the way. Um, so I'll have that for adhering the actual pad to the dash, but I think next on the list is going to be to take the actual switch, uh, switches themselves, make sure they're going to fit all the holes, drill everything out as needed, and then go from there. All right, I went through switch by switch and all of these switches fit, the blower switch. These two are actually going to be, the switches themselves are small for the holes, so I may have to wrap something around them when I go and put them in there, but there will also be some of the material from the dash. I'll leave that in the holes to try and fill. But then, yeah, the fan switch was good, turn signal, headlight, and then this is the horn button and that fit perfectly as well. So uh, next on the list, I need to check the three lights, you know, the, the blue, the green, and the red. Make sure those will fit the holes. If not, I will drill them out accordingly. And that brings us to the lights that I'm gonna be using. Um, I went ahead and ordered these original style lights. Um, I got these from Europa Spares in England. They were much more cost effective than any of the US vendors that carry these style lights. Um, and they're a pretty easy install. So I've got the red, the green, and the blue. So I'm gonna go ahead, check the barrels, see if they fit the holes. If not, I will drill the holes out a little bit larger, make them fit, and uh, then we'll be good to go as far as those go. All right, and there we go, lights in their proper holes. I did look online at photos, and yeah, the green goes all the way to the right, the blue right there in the center, and then the red over the ignition switch. I did have to drill them out um, using stepper bit, and just went with, the, it was actually the largest size on this, uh, this bit. So I just kept going until it fit. So yeah, all set there. Those holes are drilled. Uh, last one I need to check is the ignition switch. Oh, I'm pretty sure I checked that the other day, but uh, I'll just verify and make sure that fits its hole. And that should be it. Uh, the hole over here, this one half is actually for cold air vent, um, which I don't have that set up right now. So I'm probably just gonna put the cover over it and not use it. I don't have, I haven't decided yet. I might go ahead and order it. Um, I'll figure it out. But uh, as of right now, I don't have a cold air set set up, cold air kit set up for the car. All right, <clears throat> and the ignition switch fit in place perfectly. That is the Lucas switch, pretty straightforward. It is off, it is on, it is start. There is uh, no accessory, no, uh, yeah, no, nothing to mess around with. If it's in the on, everything's powered. There's no you know, key on, start on, you know, only power when cranking, etc. So pretty straightforward, but that fits in place. So I am all set pre-fitting everything in this dash, um, other than the gauges, but those are all standard holes, so that should be fine. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so yeah, on to the next. All right, so next thing I did while on the topic of ignition is the two wires I had previously run through uh, when I was doing the start of the Edelbrock ProFlow install. This is the tack wire. Um, I finished basically wrapping it all the way over here to the steering column, and I just kind of tucked it behind braces and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, this is the tack wire, which the tack will end up being right about here, so there's plenty of length on that. And then here is the trigger wire for the relay for the Edelbrock. I went ahead, put a connector on it, and I have it connected to the ignition, the second ignition terminal on the Lucas switch, because there are two, two, two terminals for the constant hot, two terminals for the uh, hot one key on, 
and then there's the single terminal just for the starter solenoid uh, trigger. So uh, I had an open terminal there, figured that was probably the easiest thing to do. So that pink with blue is the extended wire that will turn on the relay uh, when I turn the key on. Correction, it is pink with black. I said pink with blue, meant pink with black. So yeah, that is the, uh, the trigger wire. All right, and while I was in the area doing a little more cleanup of wiring, um, I had a second gray with yellow coming out of here that was no longer being used. It was just taped off, so I went ahead and removed it from here. Uh, I think that went into one of the wiring harness connections that I removed when I gutted the harness. Uh, so that came out, and then this red with green that's now going into that spot was actually a loose one as well that was snipped from something else in the harness, and it was just hanging loose. So instead of cutting it out of the harness back here, I just went and tied it into this spot here in case in the future I need a uh, 12 volt switch heavy duty lead. I have a spare one here, it's just in there. Um, and I went ahead and re-loctited the um, set screw when I put it back into place, checked and make sure everything still has continuity and it does. So all set there, that cleans up those two uh, large, uh, large gauge hot wires that were just hanging down here in the door jam uh, from when I did the dieting. All right, so back under the car, uh, revisiting the fan questions I had in my previous video. Um, I pulled that blue wire that was over on the driver's side that I thought was the, the power to the fan, and sure enough, it was. Uh, it's actually, I pulled it all the way out there because I undid the connectors, as you can see here. This is the ground wire that's grounded over on the frame over here. Uh, St. Shears are ground with the headlights. But uh, anyway, so here are the main leads off of the fan, and it does look like it is the same gauge wire uh, that was being used before, so at least I don't feel so bad now. Um, it may be a slightly larger gauge, and I'm looking at it up close uh, in comparison to what was being used. So um, either way, I think I'm going to rewire it, use something a little bit heavier duty, just to make sure there's no issues with, you know, wires melting down the road if this thing's, you know, running the fan on a lot and uh, drawing some amps. So I uh, just wanted to give you an update that uh, I am taking a look at this issue now. All right, I went ahead and remounted a couple of relays, started kind of re locating some wiring where it's supposed to go, definitely looking a lot cleaner. Uh, another part of that, I went ahead and removed this from the firewall. This is that standalone uh, fan controlling system that uh, the car had. No longer need it, uh, so I disconnected what was connected under the dash because this is actually what had the standalone on-off switch that goes into the dash as well as um, you know the, its own little sending unit and everything that went into the cooling system. So. This is removed, I can probably resell this or something, get some money out of it, um, but I'll go ahead and uh, wire in the fans to the new EFI, which will control them going forward. All right, so with that, I think I'm gonna end this one here because it's gone on for a little while. Uh, I believe next things on my list that I need to address are one, this right here, um, need to get out the old throttle pedal and cable and start figuring out how to mount this mechanical linkage because that is going to need to go on the firewall right there. Uh, so I need to get that kind of in place so I know what space and whatnot I have available for mounting other things because that hole that's right there, I want to use that for the speedo cable, which you can see sitting there on the fuel rail. So I need to try and figure out how to remount that because that's going to put that right in the correct spot. Uh, with the speedometer sitting almost center in the dash, just slightly to the driver's side. So uh, once I get that done, and then I can get back to trying to wire in the fan relay, which I do have some wiring there that I'll use for that much heavier gauge wiring I found laying around. Uh, need to figure out where I'm going to put the actual relay itself if I want to have it on the firewall here. I'd like to see if I can find like an older style metal relay that'll look more like the period um, you know, the period correct for the car. I did find a Lucas one that's a 20 amp, but I don't really trust a 20 amp for running a fan. I'd like to find a 30 amp. So I'm gonna do some uh, searching around, see if I can find something that would take its place. Um, other thing is, you know, I was thinking, you know, with the dash, I would have that fan toggle switch on off in the one spot, but then yeah, the EFI is gonna control that. So I really don't need a toggle switch um, to run the fan. 
So what I may try and do is one of the controls I had mounted on this little bracket here was for the HVAC and it's basically the control for going from floor to defrost. Um, I'm wondering if I can find a toggle versus having, you know, it's right here is this, this switch, it's just a rotational knob. I'm wondering if there's a way that I can make it work with a toggle switch that I could put there so the switch would look correct in the location, but then it'd be one less thing I had tucked up under the dash and I'd have that for controlling the floor versus uh, the tube outlets on the uh, heater box that you see there. So anyway, those are things that are kind of going through my head right now that I need to figure out and are kind of the next on the list as I'm moving along with this project. Uh, so those will be coming up uh, hopefully in the next video. That being said, if you like what you're seeing, if you're learning something, if you want to follow along, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the notification bell. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section. I do review them and I will respond. Uh, and that being said, thank you for watching and have a great day.